never seen ghee, you take butter and you slowly cook it for many hours at real low temperature and all the fats and the impurities come to the top. And that's like the essence of the cow, from the first the milk, then the, then the cream, then the butter, and then the ghee. And the ghee, is just put a little, put it in a clay pot with a lid, you can put it on the shelf for 10 years and it's still pure. And they use it and they pour it on the fire. You can smell this amazing sweet smell because it doesn't have all the milk fats in it or anything. It's just clear, pure wonderfulness. And um, so, but when we're cleansing our soul, all these impurities come out. We start freaking out. You know, you start getting some purification. That's when all the crap comes out. All this stuff from many lifetimes, millions of births, just like churning out of our heart. And all these anarthas, anger, lust, greed, envy of God, pride, this. <laughs> And we think, man, I thought I was going to get all peaceful. I just started spiritual life. Oh, my God. But no, it has to get worse before it gets better. Because anger, lust, greed are the three gates leading to hell or taking us below ourselves. And we tiptoe away uh, be, to be free from the ego before it really grabs a hold of us and we get angry, you know. And uh, there's a way to, to deal with anger, lust, and greed. But I think that our freedoms allow us to worship as we will that's the greatest freedom because the great spirit that's the one thing we got from god is free will we can never have jealousy or strife or harsh times in this world if we just respect everyone's free will especially those that might do us wrong cheat us whatever just that's people do what they do and that's because they have free will so by learning to respect free will we get along really great in life we can wish everyone well even if it means we just step back and pray for them and help them out that way if they're doing wrong decisions, we can tell them nicely, but, you know, have one without the other. Nature is a com combination of purity and balance. And for humans, I learned this from nature out in the woods, is that humans are also meant to become those two things. Purity is realizing our spiritual self, and the balance is realizing the will of God. All right, this is uh, Lord Vishnu. I painted this one in uh, about 1990 when I first joined the ashram. And I did it in my own art style. You can see it kind of gives it like a mystical animated effect. And uh, everybody has an expansion of Vishnu in their heart as the Paramatma, the super soul, about nine inches tall. And for me, this, uh, this form of Vishnu is what that looks like. And a lot of times on my TP, I will use this as the door on the outside. Green Air Temple, the two world is large. Now that's boring. Two channels, we always understood. Chain of life and fruits of kind. Many teachers slaughtered. What am I to do? See the Green Air Temple looks back to me, I cried. What am I to do? See the Green Air Temple looks back to me, I cried. No, it ached with flow. It ached with flow. Self is the self is the self. We always do things to benefit, but the, 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 the false conception of the self is the false ego. And when you do that, it's false egoic. But when your true self is being benefited by true spiritual life and true awakening, killing the false ego, the ahankara, uh, the anahankara, and then we, we come to the anahankara stage, which is without false ego. And yeah, you do want to benefit that self. It's like there's a person, one person says, I like cigarettes. I, I'm going to go, go and say, try to get a bunch of pe people to quit smoking, you know, by the hordes. And I try to get them all together. And some people, they make the announcements. And someone says, I, I like cigarettes. And then <laughs> someone else, then I say, is there a voice that kicks you in the ass and says, I, wishes I, could, I wish I could quit these things? They're like, some people are like, no, I just, you know, yeah. But most people say, yeah, there is another voice that says that. Okay, why am I smoking these things? These things are stupid. They're such a waste of money. They make my teeth yellow. They make me smell. I can't date someone that doesn't want to smoke, date a smoker, blah, 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 blah. You know, and then there's the quote that the majority of people spend the first portion of their life making the latter portion wretched, you know, and they're 
that's what they're setting themselves up for, you know. And from the time that they started smoking, their beauty, their intelligence, their luster, their wisdom, that inner luster, that glow, it all stopped increasing. They were some, like, you know, 15-year-old naive kid, and they thought it was cool. And you see them when they're old. It's just like this dingy, dull aura. We, we, we just have all this free will. That's the great gift of the Spirit, you know, and the ultimate use of the reason for free will so we can love. And this is part of our culture. We have to address this soberly, and there's a word for sober in Sanskrit. It's dhira. It means a person who sees things as they are. That's why the ego is right here at the top of the head. You know, it's diluting your, your third eye, which is your intelligence, your, your two eyes, the dualities, which is the mind. I like this. I don't like that. Then the senses are, you know, the tongue, sadhira, the bijajal, the, the tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. And then it pushes on the stomach, which pushes on the genitals. Breathe in and out the top of the head, they focus. This is mechanical, this is just the subtle body, but it's to try and help focus and get rid of the ego, because our ego is reacting to everything around us that's ego. Your ego doesn't react to other people's ego that tries to throw stuff on you, because it's only the ego that sees the ego. So for ourselves, we don't take any offense. There's a saying, don't try to see God, but act in a way that God will want to see you. And in this way, um, you start understanding the essence of where our saintlyhood comes from. So I'm a when we respect others' free will, we come to the purity and balance, and nature blesses us with all compassion. And this energy of compassion is that comfort of the mother, that great comfort where you're totally feeling loved, safe, and secure and happy and loved in every way. But we have to give that to each other. That's what we have to do. If we can't give that to each other as humanity, then we will never find the, uh, the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is the symbol for regenerating life, which is a spiral. Okay. And then th this is uh, the root that goes down. This is the branch and the branch. So instead of just having a, a male and female cross, just balanced compassion, mother energy reaching out, and male, which is the cerebral dominated religions that are being maintained through time. It's like a Maserati being carried through time. You gotta have a lot of mechanics that take care of that vessel so it can make it through time. And so the religions have all their rules. That's like the male, and then the female is the compassion, trying to reach out and create a, a shelter for all humanity. Because compassion, you know, in, in religion means compassion and love. It means giving shelter. But the shelter is pure, and it leaves all the negative things behind. Um, but people have to sacrifice, you know. That's what mercy, austerity, cleanliness, and truth are about, the four qualities that a human can have in full. Mercy, austerity, cleanliness, and truth. Create a temple where I pray permanently and for good. Where the Creator's love is understood for you and I to see the green air temple, it will come back to me. I cry. Understood for you and I to see the green air temple, it will come back to me. I cry to know it aches with love. It aches with love. It aches with love. It aches with love.